Now that we have an understanding for the creation and evolution of the twin souls in regards to their ethereal and physical forms, let us look at the next card, the Hierophant. At this time, the male and female twin souls have still not manifest onto the physical plane. For before they make this final transition from the ethereal to the material realm, they must first understand their covenant with the divine. This is symbolic of the Hierophant card, which is equated to the ethereal conscious force between the divine twin souls and God consciousness. For they cannot reunite with this divine consciousness again until the cycle is completed. It is at this time their destinies become known to them, as the gift of immortal life comes with a responsibility to keep on a path of truth. Once this information is bestowed upon the Divine Twin Souls, they are now free to decide whether they continue and be manifest onto the material plane or return to Atum. We also need to understand that this transitional stage doesn't result from discussions and conversations. This is done on an ethereal and conscious level, and as such, this understanding is something that is inherent within each soul and the divine. Unfortunately, it is at this stage of the soul's evolution that the religious establishment, seeking to gain full control of the masses, inserted themselves into the role of the Hierophant, making the masses believe it was only through the church popes and priests that you could uphold your covenant with God. In truth, there is no human that can stand between you and the divine, because each soul has their own personal connection, for we all carry a part of the divine within us. We are all an extension of the divine, and everything we have ever done throughout all our incarnations is recorded in our hearts and experienced by God consciousness. This is what the Eye of Ra symbolizes, the all-seeing Eye of God that measures the heart on the return of the Light or Holy Spirit of God consciousness. So there is a covenant each soul makes the divine and its twin that is known consciously by this soul prior to manifesting onto the physical plane. At the end of the cycle, all of the deeds within the heart of every soul is illuminated and weighed against the feather of truth, which we now know is symbolic of this divine conscious light from Orion. And it is only the souls that have upheld their covenant and lived as good souls that are rewarded with immortality. This is why the heart is so important in all the cultures, mythologies and scriptures. For what is written in the heart cannot be hidden from the light and each heart will be weighed. So let us once again return to the Golden Mean Spiral and Fibonacci sequence to see where the Hierophant card number 5 is situated. And we see that it is at number 5 on the Fibonacci sequence and Golden Mean Spiral. Again, we can also see this section of the Golden Mean Spiral encompasses all the other sections and this is symbolic for the covenant between the Divine Twin Souls and God before they manifest onto the physical plane. If we add the numbers of the Fibonacci sequence up until this section, we get 12. The number 12 is symbolic of the Twin Souls who are not yet reunited with God Consciousness. We can also look at the number 5 in its symbolic form and see that the Roman numeral ones that were on the High Priestess card are now joined together at the bottom. This is representing the connection between the Twin Souls as they are about to be manifest onto the physical plane. The High Priestess card is also symbolically connected to the Hierophant, for it is the female creation force that births everything into existence, including the Twin Souls. We can also see this relayed in ancient Egyptian and Sumerian mythologies, as it is Isis who resurrects Osiris, and Semiramis who resurrects Nimrod, and the goddess Nut that creates all. We see the symbolic connection of these numbers also on the Justice card, which is number 11. 
This card is symbolic for the covenant on our return back to God consciousness. For at this stage, the discernment of our covenant determines whether we pass beyond those pillars back to our divinity. If we look to the Kabbalah tree of life, the Hierophant card equates to the very mysterious and misunderstood Sephirot death. Death is like Kether, and they are both symbolic of the ethereal and conscious forces outside of the ethereal physical form represented by the other Sephirot. Death is situated between the throat and third eye chakra, representing a conscious and ethereal force between the soul and divine consciousness. In Kabbalah, death is said to represent a third conscious intellect. This is symbolic for the conscious ethereal force between the divine and the consciousness of the souls. Death is placed directly in the middle of the four sephirots, Chokma, Bina, Chesed and Gevara. These sephirot are symbolic of the ethereal and physical forms of the male and female twin souls. Just as we saw the tarot and Fibonacci numbers depicting the mirrored creation sequence of the twin souls from ethereal to physical, we also see this shown in the tree of life with the positions of these four sephirot. So we have the magician represented as Chokma, the high priestess Bina, the empress is Chesed and the emperor is connected to Gevara. Chesed is symbolic for the attributes within the physical manifestation of the divine female twin soul, of love and kindness. And Gevara encompasses the physical qualities of the emperor and is symbolic for strength, power and judgment. We also see that death lies directly beneath Ketha. And it is said in some Kabbalah texts to be a reflection of Ketha. Death is also situated directly in the middle of Tifereth, the heart, and Ketha, God consciousness. However, this also includes Daleth, which represents the mind and is connected to the third eye chakra. The path on which death is situated is known as Gimel or Camel and represents the connection from the heart to the divine, but shows that there is a third elemental consciousness that we must pass beyond which is represented by death. Death is also situated between the throat and third eye chakra as it is symbolic of the expressed agreement of our covenant between the divine and our twin soul. The path of Gimel shows us that we must pass beyond death and have upheld this covenant to be bestowed with immortality and crowned at Ketha. It is the light within our hearts that grants us access beyond the pillars of Solomon's temple to reunite with the divine. We can also see the path of Gimel or Camel reflected in this old saying. It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to go to heaven. Gimel is also the 13th path and on the number keys from ancient Egypt, the number 13 is also directly related to the third eye and crown chakra. For this is symbolic of the death of the physical container upon reuniting with God consciousness. So again, we see the path to the crown is directly related to the heart. And once again, on the ancient Egyptian number key, we can see that the number eight, which is symbolic for immortality, is connected to not only the heart chakra, but also the third eye and crown chakra. However, we will visit this further when we look into the Death Tarot card in future videos. In this verse from Psalms 119.17, it even mentions the word Gimel. It states, Gimel, deal bountifully with thy servant, that I may live and keep thy word. The numbers of this verse are also significant, as we see it relates to 11 and 8. 11 being symbolic of the twin souls manifest into their physical body and 8 equating to their immortality. Again, we can also see this covenant between the twin souls and the divine clearly shown in 2 Kings 23.3 with And the king stood by a pillar and made a covenant before the Lord to walk 
after the Lord and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all their heart and all their soul to perform the words of this covenant that were written in this book. And all the people joined in to the covenant. The king is symbolic of the divine male twin soul. And we see the verse mentions with all their heart. This is relating to the covenant between God and both the divine male and female twin souls. However, it also mentions and all the people joined into the covenant. This is symbolic of every soul thereafter making a covenant with the divine. If we look at the numbers of this verse, we see it is 23, 3. 2 and 3 equal 5. This is directly connected to the Hierophant Tarot card number 5, but also the Fibonacci sequence and Golden Mean Spiral. And the 3 is representing the Trinity bound by this covenant. As discussed earlier, the Hierophant is related to death on the Kabbalah tree of life. However, the Hierophant also has a connection to the path of the serpent as it represents the throat chakra on the tree of life. According to the Hindu tradition, the throat chakra is the fifth primary chakra and called the Vishhara or Vishhari. So again we see a connection between the number five with this chakra and the Hierophant card. The mantra or seed sound for this syllable is called Ham. It is interesting to note that some religious belief systems have an aversion to ham or pork. Could this be a strong symbolic gesture enacted as a way to ensure their memory of this covenant was kept? In the bindu or point above the mantra resides the deity Sadashiva, who has five faces and ten arms. Again we see the connection to five. And we also have 10, which represents both covenants of the twin souls and the infinite cycle of death and resurrection. The throat chakra is also symbolic of the energetic force we use to express our souls onto the material plane. This expression emanates from what is brought together from our heart and mind, thinking and feeling in unison. Together our feelings and thoughts are expressed at this energy point to be manifest onto the physical plane. The throat chakra is where we speak our truth and our lies. The immortality of our souls is determined by this expression of our soul and our connections with others on the material plane through cause and effect. Cause and effect is also a principle of hermetics. This is the end of part one of number six in the Mystery Teachings series. In part two, we will gain more of an understanding of the principle of cause and effect which governs our lives and how this is related to the Hierophant card and our destiny.